Hello students, welcome back. This is Mrs. Mercado speaking. Um, I hope all of you are getting familiar with my course structure by now. Um, if you do have any questions about either the content of the chapter that we're covering or the layout of either Blackboard or Cengage, please do not hesitate to contact me. Okay. Now, um, this is going to be an introductory uh, lecture over exercise 2.8. I do have another lecture posted on Blackboard uh, dealing with, um, let me see, what, what is it? That it's, it's dealing with problem two, three. Um, it's a lot longer problem than what I'm going to cover today or in this particular lecture. But I just wanted to provide you uh, with a little heads up. This is an exercise. This is going to kind of like set the tone. And then the problem is a lot more in depth. So this is going to be a shorter lecture than the following lecture that you're going to be listening to because the other problem that you're going to be working on is very long. So because the problem is long, it does require for me to take longer to explain it. Okay. I um, mean, usually uh, how it works is, you know, I try to select a couple of problems that will hopefully help you and guide you towards completing the rest of your assignments. Remember, there are short videos posted on Cengage uh, that will assist you in completing your, your problems as well as there's examples in your ebook that will help you as well. Okay, so I'm not going to take much of the time now. I'm going to jump into what I'm going to be covering in this lecture. And in this lecture, we are being asked to journalize an entry in a journal and then transfer the information from the journal to the general ledgers. Okay. What I have on the screen is coming exactly off of your book. This is these are diagrams on your book. Now this one is a journal entry. Okay. Whenever we have to record a transaction in our books, we have to do so in a journal. Okay. This is what the journal looks like. The first column is your date. Then we have a description, a post reference, the debit and the credit. And then on top of it, we have a page number. We have to keep track of our journals by page number. Okay. So step number one is to enter the date. Entering the date is very important because that lets us know when are we recording this transaction as of. Okay. That is requirement number one. Okay. Re or step number one. Step number two is to enter the debit. The debit always goes on top. Debits go first. Credits go second. It's a rule of thumb. The debit will always go before the credit. So step number one the date. Step number two, you're going to enter the account that you're going to debit. Step number three is you're going to, you're, so you're going to enter the um, name of the account and of course the dollar amount. Okay, so that's step two. You're going to enter the whole transaction for the debit. So in this case, cash is being debited for 25000 So step number two is you're going to enter your debit transaction. Step number three is you're going to enter your credit transaction. Okay. If you have multiple debit accounts, which it can happen, you have multiple debit accounts, all of the debit accounts will go on top and then all of the credit accounts will follow. Okay. But all of the debits need to go first. Okay. Now the, uh, the debit is flushed to the left, all the way to the left. The credit is indented a little bit. That lets us know which is a debit and which is a credit when we're reading these journals. Okay. So whenever we see an indent, it means that's a credit. Okay, you enter your credit transaction, both the description and the amount. Okay. Step number four, you enter a description of what you are recording. Okay. That way, whoever's reading the journal knows what's happening. Why are you recording this entry? What's going on? Okay. So step number four is a short description. And then step number five is the post reference. Okay. That is the steps that we follow when we're doing journal entries. Okay. Now, when we're done doing journal entries, we then have to transfer the information from the journal to the different general ledger accounts. Okay, so here we have an example in Exhibit 5. The top part is the journal, and then in the bottom is where we post it to our general ledgers. Every account has its own general ledger, okay, and every account has its own account number, okay, that identifies each specific account, okay. So when we're recording, we're going to be transferring the information from our journal to our ledger. We're going to have to locate the general ledger for each account that we're using. Okay. And then we're going to copy the information from the journal to the ledger. Okay. And that is what I'm going to go over right now with you. Okay. Step number one, when we're doing the transfer is you transfer the date, always transfer the date. 
the date of the journal. Okay, so you're going to copy the information exactly as you see it on your journal. Okay, step number two, you're going to put a post reference number. Okay, so now what is that post reference number? On your general ledger, your post reference number is your journal page number. Okay, so when you're posting to your general ledger, you're going to enter on the post reference column field the journal page number that you're obtaining the information from. Okay, that's step number two. Okay, um, I'm sorry, that's step um, number two. Yeah, well, you're transferring the balances over. So you're going to transfer the balance over. You're going to, once you transfer the balance, um, then you go ahead and you enter the, um, the, the journal page number. So I guess I, I, I went ahead of myself here. So step number one, you print the date of the transaction. Step number two, you bring in, you don't have to bring in the description of the account because the account description is on the ledger, but you do have to bring in the amount. Okay. And make sure that you copy it in the correct column, whether it be a debit or a credit. Okay, now you're going to copy it on the debit side, like in this particular case, we have a debit, so I'm going to put it on my debit column, and then you have to put it on the normal balance of the account. Uh, prepaid insurance is an asset, my normal balance is a debit, so I'm going to put it on my debit balance. So what these general ledgers do is they keep track of the balance of each of the accounts respectively. That way if your boss asks us, in this particular case, how much cash do we have? Well, we have $3,500 in cash. Okay. How much prepaid insurance do we have? Well, we have $2,400 in prepaid. Uh, when you transfer the balance, you're going to transfer it to the first set of columns, and then you have to calculate your running balance um, on the second set of columns. Okay. And we'll go over this in a bit in this particular scenario that we have right here. Okay. So in this particular case, they're asking us to journalize and post. So it says here on February 11th of 2019, Quick Fix Company purchased $2,250 of supplies on account. Um, in Quick Fix's charts of accounts, the supplies account is the number 15 and the accounts payable is account number 21. Requirement A. We have to journalize the February 11th, 2019th transaction of Quick Fix Company's two-column journal. Include an explanation of the entry. Okay, so they're asking us to journalize it. So we have our journal up here. Okay, um, da, da, da. let me see what else it says. Okay, that's all the information that it says. Okay. Now, usually, um, I'm just, I was just reading over it. Um, it, you, it usually should tell you what journal page number um, it has. In this particular case, um, it doesn't have a journal page number. So I guess we can start with one, but we'll, we'll see right now what's going on, okay? But it doesn't provide us with a journal page number, okay? Um, so let's do the requirement um, A, journalize the February 11th entry, okay? So because they didn't give us a journal page number, I'm going to enter a 1, uh, but usually you will be provided with that information. Just be very careful as the journal page number of what it is. So the transaction is that we purchased 2250 of supplies on account. So this is happening on February 2019, okay? This is happening on 2019, and this is happening on February, and the date is the 11th, okay? So what happened on February the 11th? Well, we bought supplies on account. What did you buy? Well, remember, debits always go first. I purchased supplies, okay? How much supplies did you buy? Well, I bought 2250. Why is it giving me... Um, let me see, calibre. okay, here we go, so I bought $2,250 of supplies, okay, remember, we said debits always goes first, okay, now, the second question is, how did I pay for those supplies, well, it says here that you bought them on account, whenever you buy something on account, then we use an account called accounts payable, we owe someone money, Okay, so we owe $2,250 um, for the supplies that we purchased on account, okay? 
So that is my journal entry. You purchased supplies. Now you have more supplies for $22.50. You bought them an account, which means that you owe the money. So your liabilities increase by $22.50. Okay, that is requirement A. Now they're asking us to enter a description. And the description is we purchased supplies on account. Okay. Now letter B. They're asking us to prepare a four column account for supplies. Okay, so we have to create a general ledger for supplies. Okay, and supplies is account number number 15. It says so there. So account number 15. Okay, um, prepare a four column account for supplies. Enter a debit balance of $400 as of February the 1st. Okay. So this is happening as of 2019, February. As of February the 1st, my balance was $400. Now, um, supplies is an asset account. The normal balance of an asset account is a debit. So my balance is 400. This is where it's very important that you know the normal balances of your accounts, okay? What kind of an account is a supplies? Supplies is an asset. The normal balance of an asset is a debit, okay? Now, they're telling you telling you here to prepare a four column account for supplies, enter a debit balance of 400, which we did as of February the 1st, and it says to place a check mark on the posting reference column. Okay, they're asking us to place a check mark there. Okay. Okay. So there we go. So we've set up our general ledger for supplies. Now they're asking us to set up another four column account, but this time for accounts payable. Okay. So we're going to set it up. Accounts payable. And my account number for accounts payable is 21. Okay. So we've got the name of the account. We've got the account number listed. Okay. Now this one has a credit balance of 18,300. Okay. As of February 1st. So let's enter that balance. Okay. February. And this is happening as of February the 1st. And I have a credit balance of 18,300. Okay. And it says place a check mark in the posting reference column. Okay. Usually when we have a balance, we usually have the check mark as a symbol letting us know this is our beginning balance. Okay. So we've set up our general ledger for accounts payable. Okay, that's requirement C. Now requirement D says post the February eleventh, two thousand nineteen transaction to the accounts. Okay, so now we're gonna transfer this journal entry down here. Okay, so we have to post the transaction from the journal to the ledger. Okay, and my page number is one. They didn't give you a page number here, but I'm going to use it as one as a default. Okay, so let's start off with supplies. Okay, I'm going to transfer and I'm going to transfer only this transaction. Let me highlight it. Okay, I'm going to transfer that transaction to my supplies account. So this is my supplies account. The date is the 11th, okay? okay? On the item, we don't enter anything for now. Um, on the item, we usually enter if it's an adjusting entry or a closing entry. In this case, this is just a regular entry. If it's a regular entry, we leave the item field blank, okay? On the post reference, you enter the journal page number, okay? Journal page number. The page number goes right there. Okay, so this is journal one. Okay, I'm going to transfer it to, uh, from, I got up this information from page one of my journal. Okay, now what do I have? I have a debit of 2250. So I'm going to enter 2250 right there. Okay, that's a debit. That's what I have. I'm transferring the debit down to my debit column. Okay, now I need to get my updated balance. Well, I had um, a $400 debit and I've added another debit of $2,250 because they're both debits. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add them together. Okay. And that gives me $2,650. Okay. 
So be very careful when you're getting the account balance. You need to know the normal balance of the account and whether a debit or a credit increases or decreases. Okay. In this case, this is supplies. This is a debit, um, and it's increased by a debit. My normal balance is a debit. So if any time I have a debit, I'm going to add. Every time I have a credit, I'm going to subtract. Okay. So that is my balance right there. Okay. After I have done that, I'm going to go back to my journal and I'm going to copy my account number. Okay. My account number right here is going to be transferred right there. Okay. So my account number is account number 15. Okay. This lets me know that I have transferred this transaction, the first transaction, to general ledger number 15. Okay, that's what it's telling me. If you want to look at this transaction, go to General Ledger 15 and then you'll find it. And sure enough, it's right there. Okay, so that's what we did with the first transaction. Now I'm going to transfer the second transaction. Okay, so the second transaction is on your accounts payable and I've got a credit. And this is happening on the 11th. So I'm going to enter the 11th. The item field is left blank. Okay. Uh, my post reference, what journal number are we using? Well, we're using journal number one, okay? And my transaction is a credit. Therefore, I'm going to enter it on my credit column of 2250, okay? So now, if you notice here, for my accounts payable, I have my balance on the credit side. Why? Because accounts payable is a liability. My normal balance is a credit, okay? So I've got a credit and a credit, okay? So, because you've got a credit and a credit, now we have to change this, okay? This is accounts payable. Every time you have a credit, you're going to add, okay? Every time you have a debit, sorry, let me, okay? Every time you have a debit, you subtract, okay? So, a debit is subtracted a credit is added okay and we are doing this because accounts payable is a liability my normal balance for a liability is a credit so in this case I have got a credit of 18,300 and I got another credit of 2250 well what am I going to do I'm going to add it why because they're both credits okay so the normal balance is 18,300 credit I'm going to add another credit of 2250 that's going to give me 20,000 550 okay now if this would have been a debit then you would have subtracted but because it's a credit you add okay it's very important that we review the normal balances of our accounts and we understand what is going on so now in this case I know that my balance on my accounts payable is 20,550 what does that mean that means that I owe $20,550 to different customers okay I've purchased items on accounts. Now I need to pay them. Accounts payable lets me know how much money I owe. Okay. My supplies is how much supplies you have on hand. Well, I have now $2,650 of supplies. Okay. So I've posted the transaction on my ledger. Now I need to go back to my journal and I need to enter the account number, which is account number 21. That way I know that I've posted this transaction for my accounts payable to ledger number 21. Okay. And that is what you do. You keep on, if you have 20 transactions, you have to go through every transaction and transfer each of those items to the respective accounts. Every account is going to have its own general ledger. Every le general ledger is going to have an account number and an account an account name and an account number and then we have to calculate the running balance on that account okay because we're going to be using that in the future to do so for our financial statements and reporting okay so that is requirement d okay i'm going to let you all tackle requirement e which is to rules of debits and credits apply to all companies i'm going to let you all figure that out but this is how you record from your journal to your ledgers Okay, make sure that when you're doing your post reference on the journal for the post reference, you are going to put the general general ledger account numbers and you enter them only after you have transferred the information from the journal to the ledgers. <coughs> Excuse me. On the general ledgers on the post reference column, 
you're going to enter the journal page number. Okay, that way I know, well, where do we get this transaction from? Well, we got it from journal one. Okay, so it's very important that you don't forget that step because points will be deducted for failure or forgetting to enter your post reference information. Okay, so this is with just one transaction. You're going to have plenty of opportunities to practice in your homework. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. I highly encourage that you all set up like study groups or, uh, you know, a time, uh, a way to communicate with each other. That way, if you have any questions, you can, uh, you know, communicate with your classmates, try to figure it out. And I'm always here to help as well. But sometimes, you know, um, students have other ways of explaining it better or easier um, and then just being able to collaborate with your classmates is very important but this is um, exercise 28 if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out to me please on the second lecture that i've posted be patient it is a very long lecture because it's a very long problem okay so if you are diff having difficulty completing the problem when you're working on your homework I highly recommend and suggest that you listen to the blackboard uh, video because um, it is going to help you go through the problem I go step by step okay so that is it until next time take very good care of yourself and have a wonderful rest of your week